And now finally, we're on to my favorite topic of all, um, partisan bias in the media. And part of the reason it's my favorite topic is that this is part of the research that I did. In fact, the only article that I ever co-wrote or participated in that was actually published in a political science journal was called In the Eye of the Beholder, and it was an experiment that I did with uh, Professor Matthew Baum on bias in the media. It's, a, it's been a topic of interest for me for a long time. And so, and I think I have a different take on bias in the media than most people have. And I'm probably going to be challenging your view, regardless of what you think about the media. So let's start from the beginning. As always, what do I mean by partisan bias in the media? The idea that there's a partisan bias in the news media means that the news media favors one party over another. When people say that the media has a liberal bias, they're saying that they think that the media tends to favor Democrats. When people say the media has a conservative bias, they're saying that they believe that the media tends to favor Republicans. Now, I want you to go back and think about the original slide I showed you about the media. Um, to me, the idea that the media, everybody that, everybody who constitutes the media has a bias in favor of one party over the other is just absurd. We have such a diverse media located in different parts of the country, serving different kinds of uh, customers. The only bias that I can think of that shapes what the media does is they are bias uh, in favor of making money over everything else. Profit over partisanship. That would be the main bias that I would say we can safely say is true of all media outlets. But I want to address some of the evidence that people marshal to go ahead and suggest that the media has a bar partisan bias one way or another. So first, some people, what they do to justify their argument that the media has a bias a partisan bias, is they point out that journalists tend to be Democrats. Now, this is true, especially if you're talking about journalists at national newspapers. Right? There's a tendency for journalists to be Democrats. Um, that's true. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing a study that was done that asked journalists in 1992 who they voted for president. After the 1992 presidential election, an, an organization interviewed journalists from national organizations, national news organizations, and asked them who they voted for. Now, I want you to remember that in that election, Bill Clinton got 43% of the vote, President Bush got 37% of the vote, and this guy, Ross Perot, got the remaining 20% of the popular vote. Bill Clinton won in the Electoral College, and so he became president. When journalists were asked who they voted for, 88% said they voted for Bill Clinton. Only 12% voted for George Bush. And so there were people who said, look, if journalists are overwhelmingly Democrats, as is demonstrated by their vote in 1992, then of course that's going to affect their news coverage. They're going to see the world through the partisan eyes that they have. Now, I take exception to that. Because while I've told you, I think, that I, bl I am on one end of the ideological spectrum. I am either a loyal Democrat or a loyal Republican. I believe that I present information in a balanced way. I do so because I think that that's my professional obligation. Now, I want to add that other professors see it differently. 
they think it's important to tell students what your ideology is, what your partisanship is, so that students can be aware of that when you're talking to them. I understand that perspective, I just see it differently. I feel like my obligation is to present things in a balanced way, and hopefully you feel I'm doing that. If not, post something on the discussion board. I'd be interested in hearing what you think. But assuming you do think that I present things in a balanced way, I believe journalists are capable of doing the same thing. So the mere fact that in this survey it showed that 88% of the journalists interviewed voted for um, Bill Clinton isn't persuasive enough to me. I don't find that persuasive enough. I figure if they can be professionals, I can be professional. Or let me reverse that. So if I can be professional, they can be professional. You know what I mean. I do think I've seen evidence, though, that um, when it comes to social issues, journalists tend to be more liberal. But that's also because journalists tend to be more educated than the rest of the population. And people who are more educated tend to be more liberal on social issues. And so I don't know whether it, their stance on social issues has to do with their partisanship or with their level of education. And so once again, as a political scientist, I can't just make that assumption. So I don't buy that argument. Now, there are other people who argue that the media has a conservative bias. And what they do is they point out the, the owners of these large media corporations that own so many of the media outlets that provide us for our information, they tend to be Republicans. The argument they make is if a Republican owns a news media outlet, of course they're going to have that outlet push a conservative perspective. I don't buy that argument either. Comcast owns two different organizations, MSNBC and CNBC. For those of you who are familiar with MSNBC, I think it unquestionably has a liberal bias, meaning its commentators tend to reflect views that are similar to people on the left. There are some exceptions, but I think especially their primetime um, commentators are clearly liberal. CNBC, on the other hand, is a business news channel. From my own experience with CNBC, I, I tend to think that they have a slightly conservative bias, although I'm going to show you another organization that calls them centered. But either way, if you accept the fact that CNBC is centered and, you, and that MSNBC is very liberal, they're both owned by the same corporation. Why would a corporation have an outlet that's centrist, centrist or even to the right, and one that's clearly liberal? Well, I would suggest to you that there's a clear explanation. But I'm actually going to come to that a little bit later. So don't forget where we are with this. Don't forget where we are. Now, there are other people who, when they examine, when they try and determine whether or not the media has a bias in it, they, regard, they rely on uh, people who are doing analysis of the content of the news. They're looking at the actual news as it's reported, and they're saying, based on what we see when we look at the news, um, we can tell that the media is biased. Now, before I elaborate on this, I want to make a distinction that students oftentimes don't know. In newspapers, in particular, there is a difference between news coverage and editorials. News coverage is supposed to be balanced and neutral. Editorials are supposed to be commentary. So oftentimes people will point to the commentary in the editorials and say, see, they have a liberal bias or they have a conservative bias. 
They are supposed to have a bias. That's what people are paid to do. So people will point out, for example, on Fox News, they'll show, they'll talk about the primetime hosts on Fox News and they'll say, see, they're in totally biased. Those people are paid to give their perspective and their perspective comes from a, a more conservative leaning side. People on MSNBC who are in prime time, they have a liberal bias and that's what they're paid to do. If they were to get on either side, were to get on in prime time and start giving balanced news coverage, you know what would happen? They would lose their audiences. People would say like, this isn't what I tuned in for. I tuned in to have my ideas confirmed. I tuned in to hear somebody say, yeah, what you think is right. So when we're thinking about bias in the media, make sure that we're talking about people who are supposed to be doing balanced news. People who are doing commentary are not expected to be balanced. I mean, it would be nice if they were, but that's not their job. That's actually not what they're being paid to do. Now, with that in mind, there are some people, some organizations that examine uh, the news. And whereas some people talk about fake news, I'm gonna talk about fake science. There are two organizations that I'm gonna identify in particular. One is the Media, Media Research Center. You'll frequently hear conservatives cite the studies done by the Media Research Center. The Media Research Center is not doing scientific analysis. As a matter of fact, in January of 2022, if you looked at their webpage, and it may be the same today, this is how they describe themselves. The Media Research Center's commitment to neutralizing leftist bias in the news media and popular culture has had a critical impact on the way Americans view the liberal media. The Media Research Center is a research and edu education organization operating under 501c3 of the Eternal, Internal Revenue Tax Code. Their contributions are tax deductible to the max maximum extent of the law. They portray themselves as a research organization. They are not. I know this because I'm a researcher. And the way scientific research works is you do not begin with a conclusion and then look for evidence to support it. You don't begin with a conclusion that the media has a liberal bias and then look for evidence of that liberal bias. Because guess what? If you're only looking for evidence of a liberal bias, you're going to find it. But they're not alone in this game. Liberals will frequently cite another organization called Media Matters. As of January 2022, this is how Media Matters describes itself. Media Matters for America is a web-based, non-for-profit 501c3. They always like to point out that they're a 501c3 progressive research and information center dedicated to comprehensively monitoring, analyzing, and correcting conservative misinformation in the U.S. media. They're only looking for conservative misinformation. Why? because liberal misinformation is what they call the truth. But just like the Media Research Center, Media Matters is only looking for evidence of a conservative bias, of conservative misinformation. And if the only thing you're looking for is conservative misinformation, guess what you're gonna find? Conservative misinformation. So I personally don't buy any of the research that either one of these organizations do. And I wouldn't trust anybody doing research if I know what their conclusion is gonna be before they start their study. I'm a scientist, a political scientist. When I start my studies, I'm as interested, I'm interested in what I'm gonna find. I don't know what the results are gonna be. If I knew what the results were gonna be, it wouldn't be science. And that's true about the, the experiment that I'm going to describe in the last lecture video. Now, there are people who do what I'm going to call credible science. They attempt to use scientific methods to get at this question of media bias. And I think that they are worthy of examining what they do and the conclusions they come to. And so I'm going to do that in the next video, and I'll return back to my discussion about news organizations that have a 
media outlet that is on the left and one that is either on the center or on the right. Because there's something else that motivates the media, and I've mentioned this before, and maybe you know what it is, but I'll talk about it in the next video.